our first uh, presentation. Um, the topic is alternative materials and configurations for uh, pre-stressed precast concrete piles splice connections. And myself, uh, Armin Mehrabi, is presenting. As I mentioned, this is about um, means and methods for uh, splicing precast concrete pile splice connection. Um, myself, Armin Mehrabi, and my graduate assistant, uh, uh, Saman Khedmat Gozar Dolati had been working on this project for a year or so. Uh, so we are at a good spot for presenting some of the results. And I uh, really would like to ask favor from uh, attendees and whoever is following this to let us know, to give us the feedback so we can improve uh, if there is a room for that. The objective of the project was to explore alternative pile splice connection configurations and materials. Uh, and we had economy, ease of application, and time for returning to pile driving as our main uh, factors for this uh, development. Uh, we wanted to learn from experiences of uh, ABC connection methods, of course. We did an uh, extensive review on that. Uh, we, uh, so the, uh, the other objective was to propose new connection and develop conceptual design and investigate the feasibility of the proposed connections. So basically, just to give you a short uh, introduction on piles and splices, uh, driving piles is a method for establishing a bridge foundation when there is a top layer of weak soils. Uh, the ribbon piles can be made of piles uh, of wood, steel, concrete, or various types of uh, composite material. And uh, one of more common types of piles for marine environment is a pre-stressed pre-gas concrete pile called PPC. And uh, pre-stressed pre pre-gas concrete piles come in different shapes and configurations. Uh, you can see uh, octagonal, cross section, circular, cylindrical, uh, square, uh, etc. And they are uh, under slides, uh, pictures on the right side of slide, you see the uh, operation of driving these uh, uh, piles into the ground. Um, for several reasons, including those listed here, it, it is necessary or uh, prefer, preferred to do splicing of the pile segments at the site. One would be easy in handling in transportation and drive, uh, driving the pipes. Uh, the other reduction in concrete cracking during handling, transportation, and driving to overcome limited headroom for driving sometimes. Um, there are cases that the pipes are designed for a certain length to gain certain strengths, but during driving, they notice that it, we are not getting to that strength, and there's a need to. Uh, splice and continue driving that we call it unforeseen situations. Then there is ex extension needed, splicing needed. Um, and if we send the uh, smaller segments of pile to the side, so we're reducing transportation costs. And of course, we need uh, smaller storage space or so. Um, there, there, there are plenty of, there are several. Uh, types of splicing available, the splicing methods available uh, right now in the market. And uh, some have been researched not getting to the market, but they are on their way. Uh, but we, through our literature review, we, we have seen some issues with uh, uh, some or all of those uh, uh, connection types or splicing types. Those issues include, uh, as listed here, uh, it doesn't mean really that each and every has all these issues, but there are just general issues around different types of splicing, including corrosion susceptibility for, of course, the ones that are using steel, a shortage of certified labor, including welders, weakness in tension and flexure for some of them, uh, requiring significant preparation before installation, uh, costly and time-consuming procedure, and uh, in most of those uh, uh, splicing types, if it comes to unforeseen situation, they 
cannot develop the full capacity of the pipe. So we did, um, uh, by the way, just, just for your information, we have uh, several uh, detailed progress report on our site. You can uh, visit. We had to kind of condense our presentation to fit the time slot. So if you see, I'm not going into detail in some of them. You will, you can find more details on our progress report on our ABC UTC website. So going to proposed connection configuration. So for case of pre-planned situation means the situation that we knew we need to splice the pile at the site. We came up with uh, uh, this type of mechanical um, uh, connections. We're calling Steve slip uh, coupler connections. So two types of slip couplers: one grotted slip splices on the left side, and the second threaded slip splices on the right side. The grotted slip and threaded slip uh, splices. The difference is that uh, on the grotted slip, uh, the um, reinforcement on both sides, upper and lower segment of piles, go into the a sleeve and uh, grotted. On the threaded sleeve, one of the ends, uh, usually the lower end, is threaded into the socket, and then the upper reinforcement dowel is put in the socket and grotted there. So that's the difference. And for threaded sleeve splices, uh, we found in the market uh, the sleeve uh, couplers with the uh, headed bars or straight bars that can be used, both can be used. The headed uh, bar has the advantage of having shorter uh, sleeve length, uh, which is again a, a good advantage. So then what? I mean, we, this, is, this is a type of connection that has been used for uh, other elements, structure element in ABC connection, um, would it be feasible to use in a pile? And what kind of strengths and uh, uh, resistances we expect from this? So to uh, make sure that we can develop what we need as of strength uh, with what we have as of uh, sleeves and couplers, we took one example. Uh, 18 square inch square pre-stress concrete pile from uh, Florida Department of Transportation standard uh, piles, uh, pre-stress precast uh, concrete piles. And those piles based on the FDOT design specification and ACI, we calculated the uh, capacity that we expect from those splices, which in both cases, they came up uh, pretty close. For example, the flexure strength um, expected uh, by ACI is 250, by FDOT is 245. So that is the target that we are shooting for developing that strength using that type of connection. So to make sure that what we are talking can fit in that limited space in the uh, pile, we uh, use the CAD drawings and we put all details based on exact dimensions or so. You can see on the right side that uh, the cross section, especially the lower one, that shows the perimeter of outside diameter of the sockets. Um, the pre-stress, pre-cast concrete part, they have to um, have everything happening inside the stirrups in that small uh, space. So it basically doesn't allow a lot of uh, room in there. So we showed that with what we have, uh, the basically sleeves that are available uh, commercially, we can fit all those sleeves in a configuration of uh, eight bars in the cross section, as you can see in this slide, or nine bars, one additional in the center of the section, we can develop the strength that we need. So uh, it is feasible to use uh, as of space and geometry, this uh, type of connection. As of calculation, we calculated the uh, strength uh, developed uh, using uh, eight or nine uh, bars in the cross section with different sizes, eight, number eight, number nine, and number 10. And as you can see, for example, with eight number nine bar, we can develop 100% of the moment capacity of the pile at the splice. So um, if that uh, standard plans right now for, let's say, 
uh, epoxy bonded dowel, they require eight number 10. So basically we can reduce one bar size uh, in this case. And just for you to um, uh, realize that we try to keep consistent with uh, what is out there as of the distances and spacings or so, we think that there is even more room to um, uh, spread out the sleeves so that we can achieve um, the 100% capacity, maybe even with eight number eight bar. So that, that's what's for pre-planned. What if we have a unforeseen situation that uh, we want to connect? As I mentioned, um, many of, most of, I think, uh, the available connection type, they cannot develop full capacity of power when there is unforeseen situation. Unforeseen meaning that we didn't know that we needed the, uh, to splice the um, pile. So if we didn't know, therefore there is no preparation in the lower segment. Uh, that is what is limiting other uh, types of connection to develop the full capacity. For um, unforeseen situation, of course, which is definitely applicable to pre-planned situations also, we uh, suggest the two type of uh, connection, both using FRP material, fiber reinforced polymers. Uh, one is uh, using FRP sheet or jacket as for splicing, and the other using near surface mounted FRP bars for splice. Let's go to the first one, FRP sheet or jacket splice. Um, just to give you an idea how this happens, let's say we put we have a lower segment driven in that uh, green color segment, and we see that we need uh, uh, to splice it. So in that case, we we could uh, drill one uh, hole, uh, relatively short length, in the center of the lower segment, and bring the upper segment, which already has a um, alignment bar in the center to put on that. So we are we have both segments aligned, then start applying uh, FRP sheets to four sides of it um, with the uh, use of different resins, epoxy, et cetera. Um, then uh, basically wrap at the end with the transfer strips to for confinement and sometimes for the, uh, uh, developing for providing the shear strength that is required. So this is a this is a relatively um, uh, easy and fast operations. With the jacket, very similar. Uh, in this case, the sheets already as a form of uh, kind of box is coming to the uh, side. It can be uh, put on the lower segment and then uh, uh, put down the upper segment in place. In this case, we may not even need the alignment bar, but it's it's good to have it there um, uh, to provide more um, uh, shear and connectivity there. Uh, then we can, the same way we can use transfer strips to um, uh, at the ends and in, in between to uh, kind of uh, provide confinement, uh, uh, prevent uh, maybe debonding and peeling, and also and design them for shear strength. Um, so let's see how can we prove the feasibility of this proposed connection. First of all, it's all externally uh, applied system. So basically it is feasible, but we needed to know that what kind of thicknesses for FRP we are talking about. Uh, because if they are too thick, so they're gonna, uh, create projection on the driving pile, and we, which is not a good idea. Uh, and we also wanted to verify analytically if we can uh, develop the uh, strength that we require. Um, that's it. So again, we went on um, CAD and we um, just drawing of those things is, uh, is not a big deal, as I mentioned, because they are external, we are not disturbing inside the pile. So um, it is feasible basically as of applying it. What about the thicknesses? We um, considered a variation of number of sheets and thickness of sheets, uh, and additionally different strength for the 
um, FRP and different margins of elasticities. Um, most of them, all of them are getting very close to the, um, let's say, flexural strength that we require. For example, the uh, item in row one uh, using CFRP uh, material, three layers of uh, 0.12 inch uh, uh, FRP sheet with 350 KSI um, strength, uh, ultimate strength, and about 25,000 KSI can give 102% of the uh, strength that we have. All these calculation and um, section analysis also was conducted based on uh, available ACI codes uh, and specifications. So they are uh, kind of coming from a, um, a formulation that's already validated, basically. At the end, the, the last column, we showed the development length of each of those sheets on each side of the uh, splice, which goes to 26, for, for example, for row one, 26 to 38 for layer one to layer two. So um, let me go back. Uh, so you can see that three layer of 0.12 inch uh, FRP sheet will basically make something less than half an inch. So we may have half an inch thickness sticking out of the section, which is, which you may think that it's not a good idea, but there are uh, easy solutions for that. Um, if we uh, basically do the recess on the surface of the concrete beforehand, we can just flash, uh, make this uh, thickness flash with the uh, perimeter of the pile and to avoid that uh, projection also. So the second one uh, for unforeseen and pre-planned splices, second type of connection using FRP is near surface mounted, uh, using near surface mounted FRP bars. This basically, um, the lower segment, we have that same hole either driven or, or drilled or cast in there. The upper segment comes already with some grooves on the surface to um, put the FRP um, bars in there and with the alignment bar. So that upper part is put on the lower part, completely aligned. The grooves can be continued on site for unforeseen cases and beforehand for pre-planned cases. And then FRP bars or strips are put into the grooves and covered and filled with uh, bonding agent. Um, again, uh, we, we followed the um, spacing and group size and uh, everything based on available ACI uh, rules and guides. Uh, after putting the FRP rods there, we can also use uh, transfer strips to, again, for confinement or shear design. What about feasibility of these and um, what kind of strength they are creating? Uh, so, again, the cross-section with all details and width scale and all dimension, real dimensions, you can see that uh, we can uh, provide, uh, let's say, up to five uh, bars on each side of an 18 by 18 inch uh, pile specimen. Um, for, for example, for this one, as shown in row one, if you use number four, uh, or half inch uh, CFRP bar, which has 406, let's say, KSI strength and 22,000 um, KSI modules of elasticity, we can develop the 106% or basically 106% doesn't mean much, 100% of the capacity of uh, the pile, let's say. And we need about 50 inches, about four foot, uh, um, development led on each side. Um, so, which is again makes this uh, feasible and uh, um, providing the capacity that we want. So, um, if you want to sum up what we uh, what we observed and what are our, our conclusions as of what is that we are offering, uh, what kind of advantages the system think they have. 
we believe that they are easier to install. Uh, they are durable and corrosion resistant, especially the FRP ones, definitely. On the grotted sleeve also, we know that, and we found uh, corrosion resistant, either galvanized or stainless steel uh, sleeves that can be used, so they are durable uh, and corrosion resistant. Um, we can manage the driving cost uh, for establishing slides uh, uh, by selecting the proper bonding material. Um, again, we didn't go so, in so much detail on bonding material, but uh, if, you, if you go back to our progress report, you will see that we did a very extensive review on uh, a, a variety of bonding agents, including cement-based and resin and epoxy or so. so we provided a table that it's a guide for choosing those bonding material. We basically came up with uh, a, um, a reach to strength or setting and a curing time of about two hours to up to 12 hours if you choose this or the other bonding agent. So there, there are some guidelines in our report available for choosing that bonding material. And as we saw, this uh, type of connection require uh, definitely less modification to the pile segments uh, if you compare them to other types. And they uh, can overcome the shortcomings of unforeseen splices um, with, with the FRP type that we mentioned. They can develop the full capacity even if we didn't know that is needed. Um, do we have all these advantages with respect to everything? No. As I said, these are just general. Some, it may be, for example, to ease of installation, it may, may compete with some uh, and may be better with the others, durability. So this is a just general uh, set of uh, advantages we thought that collectively makes this type of connection uh, uh, some kind of advantages. But uh, is it all? I mean, can we go and do these things? We think that we need to do more, some more work, definitely. And this is where really I would like to ask uh, uh, our uh, audience uh, who have, uh, or stakeholders who have any idea or any way that we can work together to make these things that I'm going to mention uh, happening uh, collaboratively, that will be really appreciated. Uh, we know that uh, uh, we, we talked about development length of the FRP sheets or so. Uh, we know that, okay, we need to also develop the stress to the and transfer to the reinforcement and strands in the pile. So that we need to figure it out. Uh, we need to uh, validate, uh, although as I mentioned, we've done all the calculation using uh, established codes or so, but uh, it's very advantageous to prove that during laboratory tests and, and we, we need to do constructability and driving tests uh, at the site to make sure that this is going to uh, hold up. Um, basically, it, it is in a good spot. Uh, we have developed the concept and feasibility. We need some basically experimental work to, um, to uh, close the loop here. So, we have several uh, publications on this. The first one, of course, our progress report and several more um, publications already out can review. The recording of this presentation will be posted on our website, so you can always refer to this and go with it. I want to end uh, uh, the presentation here, but instead of ending on this uh, slide, I want to end on this slide, uh, letting you know that um, one of our main events uh, for uh, ABC UTC is coming up this year, end of this year, 2022 International Accelerated Bridge Construction Conference, which is focused on advanced bridge technologies. We still have time, a few more days for abstract submissions, so don't miss this. Uh, so uh, I think we have a couple minutes uh, for question and answer, and I see a question coming up there, um, asking 
time to resume driving after alignment. There are some cases where hides may experience torsion in this connection suitable for this condition. Um, first of all, let me go first answer the driving time. Um, as I mentioned, uh, let's say comparing this to a uh, epoxy bonded double uh, type of splices. The time we are talking is compared. As I mentioned, we did a, a extensive investigation on um, uh, bonding agents, and we have a very good, uh, I, we believe that we have very good guidelines to choose which bonding agents if you are in a hurry or, or, or so. So that, that I think we'll call. Uh, can we start right after application? Definitely not. We have to wait until we get the strength at the end. And as of torsion, uh, uh, we haven't tell you the truth, we haven't looked at that. Uh, so thinking that, for example, in that um, jacket type, I'm guessing that we have torsion resistant, but there's something that we need to look at it. Uh, thank you very much for the comment, by the way. So with this, we are at the end of my presentation.